Hello and welcome to another edition of Guinea Pigs with Greg. This week the video is going to be all about the crested KV and the various forms that it takes. We're going to look at the breed standard, we're going to look at the different colour variations within the breed standards. We're also going to show you some of the common faults that are found in crested KVs as well as some very good examples of how one should look. So the British Cave Council, the breed standard for the crested KV, regardless of colour, is the head to be short and broad the muzzle to be of good width and rounded at the nostrils, the eyes to be large, bright and bold, and set with good width between, the ears to be large and drooping, with the lower rim parallel to the ground, and set with good width between. The crest is to radiate from a centre point between the eyes and ears, to be deep, a regular rosette, with the lower edge well down the nose, and to have a pinpoint centre. And then the body shape, the markings, colour and coat, are all to conform to the standard of the corresponding variety. So if it's an English self version, it needs to correspond to the English self standard. If it's a marked breed, it needs to correspond to the marked breed standard. So I thought we'd start off with um, some of the faults in crested, some of the things to look out for. So we'll, we'll look at firstly um, a split crest. A split crest is where the hair on the crest parts, meaning the circle shape is not achieved. As you can see here, it looks like a centre parting at the very front of the crest. Now, this is only a split crest if after you've tried to readjust the crest, it still appears naturally. This then becomes a coat fault on the variety, meaning that the KV is probably not suitable for breeding with. Another common fault with the crests are open centres. Now, the centre should be pinpoint, but if you can see the skin and it's not quite pinpoint, this is what we call an open crest. Another common fault in the cresteds are a flat crest. This is a crest that lacks depth and lays flat on the head and is often not forming the correct shape. The centre is usually quite far down the head on these type of pigs. Um, but as you can see here, it's quite flattened out. It looks more of a rectangle shape than a circle and there's not much depth. Even though the pinpoint centre is there, it's still laying flat on the head rather than like a, a formed rosette. Mentioned we have uh, three different varieties of crested. We have the English crested, the American crested, and then the uh, AOC crested, which are usually marked varieties. An English crested is a crested KV of all one colour, including the crest, and these have to conform to the colour definitions of the English self standard. So a white needs to be white with a white crest, a black, black with a black crest, and they're allowed to have the, uh, the corresponding eye colour as well to go with that. Here we have a nice under five pink-eyed golden English crested. As you see, the colour looks just like a self-golden. The eye colour matches that of a, a self-golden. But here we have this lovely crest, a lovely rosette on the top of the head, a round crest. The ears match the pigment of the body, and it's a very nice KV indeed. And here we have some dark-eyed English golden cresteds. In essence, the colour, the eye and the pigment are the same as in a self-dark-eyed golden, but we have the addition of the crest on the head, which just sets the KV off to make them different and puts them in the coated variety. And they show off very well. I really like the shape of crest and the pinpoint centre on this particular golden. Um, it really, really uh, shows itself off nicely. And it's a very good example of a crested KV. Here we have some slate English crested KVs. These also have to conform to the standard of the self-slate. And this group of uh, slate-crested sows look particularly nice. Um, very uniform colour, uniform pigment, and the crest is very pinpoint. These bold eyes really set the crest off and give that KV a very well-balanced look. But credit to the owner. The black English crested is an all-black KV, just like a self-black. And this particular example shows off some great width, um, but you can see a slightly open centre on this KV. But it's a well-balanced pig. And this is a self-white English crested, all the way from Australia. It's a very well-balanced KV with a pinpoint centre and a pure white coat. So another type of crested we have is the American crested. And this is where the KV has a body of all one colour, but the crest is then white. The most common varieties of this we see across the UK are the Black American Crested and the Golden American Crested, but we have seen some Pink-Eyed American Crested, some Saffron and some Buff American Cresteds in recent times. 
Um, that's not to say that other com color combinations aren't available. It just means that people aren't focusing on those combinations at the moment. They're often considered by many to be one of the most attractive breeds. I mean, the contrast between the gold on the white just makes it look ever so stunning. Even the slightly overmarked or undermarked KVs are um, a sight to behold. Uh, we're lucky to have quite a few very good breeders here in the UK um, that focus on this breed and really push them forward. Uh, it's nice to see them in their in their pen, running around. They're big, thick KVs. Um, from speaking to breeders of this variety, uh, I've been told that they breed quite well and they raise their youngsters uh, quite independently. But getting the perfect crest on them is very difficult. Uh, there's no right or wrong way, but breeding good to good seems to be the common consensus uh, that if you breed a full American white crest to another full American white crest, the likelihood of getting them uh, increased dramatically. And these are some lovely examples. The contrast of the black on white really shines and sets them off. Uh, but we're looking for that crest to be completely white. So it goes in a complete full circle um, with no gaps or overlapping or overrunning. Um, it's very difficult to get this just right. And you may breed quite a few near misses or very, very good examples with just something not quite right on them. But the crest can be groomed just like the coat can be groomed. So you can pick out any overhanging hairs and help to complete that full circle. AOV crested stands for any other variety of crested KV. And the crest should be exactly the same as we've previously mentioned in the standard. It should be pinpoint, central and deep and round. And the AOV crested needs to meet the definitions of the breed standard. Here we have a nice selection of Himalayan cresteds. This is a black Himalayan crested. So as well as points for the crest, they also have to be a perfect Himalayan as well as a perfect crest making it increasingly difficult, uh, especially on the marked breeds, to achieve this. They still need black ears, black feet, black nose, well-shaped smut and pure white body. Fox, tans and otters are other examples of AOV cresteds. These are also very difficult as the pea spots are, are right where the edge of the crest should be, making it difficult to see. Um, but here are some lovely examples from all over the world of people making very good attempts at uh, producing a crested uh, tan fox or otter and again you're looking for all the right markings uh, to show according to the standard so you're looking for that good belly the p spots you're looking for the lacing on the sides and the eye circles there are a couple of ways of breeding cresteds um, and one method is breeding a crested kv to a plain headed kv and this type of pairing gives you the option of producing both plain head and crested cavies in the litter. The crested gene is a dominant gene, so if a cavy has a crest, it will have the crested gene. If it doesn't have a crest, it does not carry a crested gene. Here is a potential pairing that you could do. You could breed uh, the crested on the left to the non-crested on the right, and you would get a mixture of crested and non-crested babies. Speaking to uh, crested breeders, uh, they tell me that this method helps to tighten the crest and deepen the crest. The other way to breed crested KVs are to breed a crested KV to a crested KV, and all the resulting babies will have crests. I won't complicate matters by talking about the double crested gene, but be aware that you could have uh, two doses of the crested gene within there. And here's an example pair of uh, dark-eyed golden cresteds that you could pair together and the resulting offspring would all be crested cavies, which would be nice. While speaking to crested breeders, the general consensus was that this opened the center of the crest, breeding crested to cresteds, but it did enhance the shape of the crest. Baby cresteds are often very robust, very large, healthy animals. Um, sometimes the crest can lay backwards and look quite flat. So uh, quite often I've been mistaken in thinking that I have no cresteds in the litter, but on closer examination, the crest is just very small um, and very compact at this age until they fluff up and uh, you get to see the, the crest in all its glory. At this age, you're not expecting to see much in the way of depth or pinpoint centers, but you get a general idea of what the KV is gonna look like when they're quite young. Um, and you get to see how they're gonna be when they get older. As they get older, the crest starts to take shape. It becomes much more pinpoint centered and starts to become round and the depth starts to appear as the hair grows longer. And here we can see a lovely family 
of Slate Tans, uh, bred by Patrick Stanich uh, in Germany. And this is a beautiful family group. And you can see the, the development uh, through the, the different ages from under five, five to eight, all the way through to adult. And I'd like to thank uh, Chris Bassett, Campbell Mitchell, Hayley Butler, Emma Murphy, Wendy Eichmann, Lee Kellett, uh, Patrick Stanich, and also my daughters Grace and Phoebe for helping me with this video and let me have the, the images of the KVs. Uh, I couldn't do it without you, so thank you very much. As always, I hope you found this interesting. If you did, like and share it with other people you think might enjoy it. Until next time, I'm Guinea Pig Greg. Goodbye.